Hello everybody who's sick at home. So sorry, we are going through our integration. We started that today. Oops, should have got to the right part. So a whole lot of rules, a lot of rules that we knew from methods. Okay, um, if you were here, you would have got a little bookmark, which has got all the differentiation and the integration rules, because we're going to add to them as we go through today's lesson. Um, and really, just we went over some people had seen our log rule ln rule but some people hadn't so we we're just playing with that so a lot of 7a was very much revision from methods the only new bit that you had to be aware of so there will be some fraction ones okay where just remind you that to get common denominator times them together cross multiply we get because we can't actually integrate a function like this at the moment where we've got a function divided by a function. Please note where I said at the moment because it's coming. So with this we would then separate because we know that this equals this we can separate and integrate each one um, separately and I'm just looking at this and the class didn't tell me I forgot to plus c there. Don't forget the plus c. Um, 8 was just there because they did that by themselves so we're sort of going through and doing every hmm, I don't know every second question. Question 10 is a great one where it's in, uh, including some of the stuff we did with functions so reminding you about how to perform polynomial division so that you can then separate this function because again we cannot divide uh, we cannot integrate this as a whole with the function divided by a function yet. Um, so we've got reminder of synthetic division and then the long-winded polynomial. Okay and once we've done that we can separate them and I'm pointing with my finger but you can't see that uh, and then we can integrate term by term and away we go. Uh, the next bit, this was the new bit I guess, is that when we have cos squared and sine squared these are some properties um, that we had. If you go back and look at your double angle formula we've just uh, rearrange them to get cos squared and sine squared by themselves. Okay, so if you went back and you looked at your um, properties, your identities, we've got cos 2 theta um, equals cos squared theta minus uh, 1. Was that it? 2 cos squared theta, there you go, that was it, cos, squared, cos 2 theta equals 2 cos squared theta minus 1, so rearranging to get this by itself is where we get these properties from, same with sine squared, so eh. Um, so every time we see a cos squared and a sine squared it means that you have to replace it with that and then integrate as you go. Onward. Um, question 12 started looking at um, our properties like cosec, sec and cot. So if you look at that page, hang on, I'll get it for you. Okay, so just a reminder that these are our reciprocal functions, okay, not to be confused with inverse. So inverse functions are, is this and we, we will refer to it as arc sine x or an arc sine tan just so we don't get confused. I just said arc sine tan, arc tan arc cos, just so we don't get confused with the reciprocal functions, they're two different things, okay? So all of the things up here are reciprocal functions, um, this one is arc and we do that in the next exercise that we, we come up with. So question 12, there was a little bit of an issue, um, tan squared equals to prove that, so we had to go back and just think about some of those little proofs that we had. Um, initially when we started, I should have recorded, I'm sorry, but we got to this part here, Okay, the sine squared over cos squared, and mm, well, where do we go? So some of the tips are maybe look at your right hand side, fiddle with that and see how we get because a good proof is showing that the left hand side equals the right hand side. Sometimes you can't avoid it. So anyway, we did the right hand side, we go, oh okay, see how it becomes. So over here that made us then think, oh how about we replace sine squared with 1 minus cos squared. 1 minus cos squared we can now separate and of course that's 1 over um, Sorry, that is sec squared and that's 1. So little tips when you get stuck about how you can do things. So now we're on to 7b and we're looking at several rules and they're all on the bookmark. So when you come back and you're feeling better, you get your bookmark. For now, you're going to have to look at your rules in your textbook. So we're going to play with another 6. Yes, you've guessed at 6. Remember, you're not going to have to memorise these. You will just have to be able to use them. Um, we're skipping a little bit of the how they came to be because we look at this later in the well next term when we do implicit differentiation. So at the moment, you're on a bit of a trust mission with C, use, match, and see how you go. Okay, 
So the first ones were very, very simple. This is where we're up and that's when I decided, oops, I should record um, and away we go. I was just sorry, I forgot to tell you, just we talked about B2, that we could have actually two different answers for this. Um, they are the same, but, um, you know. So when we're using our rule, you could have this as we've got minus 1 over, oops, I think I'm talking about a different rule. Oh, so about this one up here. Yep, we could have said that's 5 arc sine, 5 arc cos, or we could have said it's minus 5 arc sine, same thing. Anyway, good luck. At home with number 5 we've got a bit of an issue because it doesn't really sort of match any of the rules now. We're all here looking at our, I don't know if you can hear that, that's the rule bookmark. Um, you've obviously looking at, at your book at home. So uh, it would be really nice if it could fit like 1 minus x squared but no go or even if it was a squared minus x squared but again no go. So this is where we're going to play with this bit at the bottom and I'm just going to do it over here. I don't know why. Um, could I rewrite this if I pulled out 4 as a common factor? So 4 times what gives me 1? A quarter minus x squared. Would we agree with that? And this also just happens to be, because um, if you look at your rules, you can see there's something there. we got square root of a squared minus, but oh, that's not squared. Except what does, what can be squared to give me a quarter? A half. So if I say we've got 1 half, squared minus x squared um, and now we've got all of this square rooted I can separate that 4 it can be root 4 times that so now this becomes just 2 times root a half squared minus x squared agreed so this is now all 1 over oh what did I put it equals there good grief Charlie Brown 2 So that's what we talked about before where I warned you, you might have to start pulling out common factors of certain things and you're using your third rules and just normal fraction-y stuff. Okay, so this would now be, are we happy? What rule would that be? Arc sine, I would agree, I would concur. So we've got the half out the front, okay? We're going to times that by arc sine. But it says it's x over a, so it's x over a half, so happy with 2x. And, of course, we've got our plus c, part b. We want to make sure we can pull out that 9, right? So, because we want just an x squared, so if I go 9, bracket, okay, and again, it's 4 over 9 minus x squared. And you go, mm, but I want this to be squared. Well, yes, you can, because lucky for us, 2 squared gives you 4 and 3 squared gives me 9. So there you go. But see, Sash? Huh? You've done it? Oh, yeah. Going to give us a clue? No. <laughs> the, the our whole idea is we want to get the x squared, right, by itself. So you could pull out that 4. So we've got 1 over 4. And that's going to be x squared plus then 4 times what gives me 1? One? 1 over 4. And then you're looking at your rules. We've gone through all the different rules there and we sort of settled on this one just mainly because of the denominator. Now, if we look at this, we've got 1 quarter, right? So it's 1 quarter times 1 over... Oops, did I lose my... There's no square root, so that's good. Um, x squared plus a half squared. Uh, but we want that half upstairs. So how can we get that half upstairs? I'm just going to put it there. Okay. Yet they laugh at me, right? They're laughing at me, but I'll go, right, I'm just going to times that. So I'm going to times this then by one half. Oops, wanted to change my colour. 
Why didn't that change? So times that by half. Now, am I allowed to just do that? It's shaking their head. I am as long as I also times by, will divide by half or times by two because a half times two is just one and I can times anything by one and it's, it's all good. So if I say a half times two, that is still technically one, agreed? So now if I rewrite this, what I've got is put this quarter and the two together, quarter times two, that's a half out the front or inside, does, doesn't matter there, but upstairs what I've got is a half all over one half squared plus x squared and that actually now fits this rule. Agreed? So look at what it is that you want and make it happen. Force it. So going along swimmingly, there have been some questions out there, very few, but um, if you get stuck, just email me and let me know or come back to the class and we'll go through. But just for this one, so absolutely you could do polynomial division, but also just have a look at this little bit. Just tell me if I'm doing something that you do not think is correct. So on the top line, what if I did this? Is that the same? Yeah. Okay, why did I do that? Because now what I can do is just go, is this still the same? x squared plus 4 over its denominator plus, isn't that the same? Because if I had like 2 plus 5 over 11, that is the same as 2 elevenths plus 5 elevenths. I can split the numerators. I can't split the denominators. And so now that means I can go, well, that's the 1. And the 6 over x squared plus, oops, and I'll put that as 2 squared. All right? And so according to my rules, as Jules said, we want a 2 up there. And that's okay because I can say, well, that's 1 plus 3 lots of. Huzzah. We've got not that long left. I was hoping we could go on, but just so you can see what is coming in this topic. Um, actually, I can't scroll on the board because this is recording and that's not fair to the owners of the book. So at home, just flick through.